Welcome to the Transmart training program for 2017. This is our second class this year. Uh, we will be having class uh, each month. Once uh, the last Monday of each month, it will be held as a, a go-to webinar session like this one, and will be held at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, today's class is on clinical and biomarker data loading uh, by Natalia Bukroff from Carve Analytics. I'd like to say uh, a couple more um, things, just so you know the uh, operation here. The this is a go-to webinar. Uh, everyone is on mute. Uh, if you need to ask a question or get our attention, you have a couple of ways of doing that. You can raise your hand uh, okay. in the little uh, dashboard up at the top. You also can type a question into the question panel, uh, or you can also type a message uh, in the uh, chat window. Uh, I will be on. Uh, my name is Rudy Potenzo, and I'm from the foundation, and I will be monitoring the class the entire time. And so, if you do have any questions or problems, please, um, you know, I will try to keep track of everyone, and I'll fit you in during the, the training as it goes along. Um, as I said, this will be recorded and available uh, later today or tomorrow. Um, this is part of a, a, a larger training program that we're having this year. Um, we have a number of classes uh, being held, as I said, uh, once at least once a month um, at the end, uh, at the, the last Monday of the month. Uh, and uh, this year, we've got a number of uh, new topics. Uh, also, we're only going to hold the transfer for beginners twice. We had one last month, and we'll have one more later in the year. Uh, the rest of the time will be on uh, data loading and advanced data loading uh, issues and then uh, uh, features. We will be exploring some of the advanced workflows uh, in Transmart, uh, including Smart R, one of the training sessions. And this time this year, we're also adding a few developer trainings where we'll be going through the the organization of, of the Transmart uh, application, the APIs, uh, and uh, how to get started programming. So um, I also want to just thank uh, our members uh, who have been contributing uh, to this training, uh, Branch of Bioscience, Clarivate Analytics, and The Hive uh, all volunteer their time to uh, offer these training classes. And so thanks, great thanks to all of them. Uh, this just shows you that some of the topics that are coming. Um, and in addition to these, uh, we will be having a training class at the Barcelona eTrix conference uh, and also a class or two at BioIT World. So we're uh, very excited about that. And, we're looking forward to, to having these extra classes this year. Um, so uh, I'd like to now turn it over to Natalia, who will actually conduct the training. And um, please, as I said, if you have questions, uh, use those, those different methods uh, where you can uh, ask, uh, get our attention, and um, we'll, we'll get your, your questions answered as quick as we can. Natalia, I'll turn it over to you. OK. Um, I just need to make sure that I will share my screen. Yes, you should have it there now. Okay. You see I, a nice lake. <laughs> okay, so you can see my screen now? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Okay, thank you, Rudy, for nice introduction. Okay. So I see some people that I know on the list of our attendees today, and I'm sure they also know how to use TM Data Loader. Uh, but hopefully we'll record it and we we'll, can introduce it to some people who doesn't know how to use it. So today I'm going to attempt to go through the data loading and this will be a combination of a cooking show and circus. A cooking show because I do have some studies that I have already prepared and loaded and circus because I'm going to attempt to load studies live. And you know how that goes, uh, there are always some issues, but hopefully I can load something. So before I start, I just wanted to mention to everyone that there was a really nice presentation about different ways of loading data from the Hive uh, last year, and you can find it on the Transmart Foundation web page. There was also a nice presentation um, from Rancho. Julia has presented different TM, uh, different loaders from the perspective of uh, a curator. So I'm not going to go through um, this presentation because some people already presented on that and I don't really know much about other loaders. All I know is TM data loader and that's what I'm going to talk about. 
So today, um, um, the outline of the training is uh, I want to show you TM Data Loader Wiki, where you can get all the information on the loader. Well, whatever information it's work in progress, whatever information is there. There is a foundation wiki when you can get information on data curation. And then I will show you the one of the geo data sets, the curation example, um, other HDD test studies example, how you set up your data loading environment for Windows and data loading environment for Mac. And we will attempt to load some studies. Okay, so the TM data load loader has been developed by Clairvite Analytics, but at the time was Thomson Reuters. And uh, this is ETL tool that was developed based on Cattle. As I understand, Cattle was the first loader that was developed for um, Transmart. And uh, I hear from people that it's not a very easy to use. TM data loader was developed um, the goal of, of, of the TM data loader was to make it easier for people like me and other non-IT people to load data. Um, one thing that I also wanted to mention is that um, I'm trying to make this training for biologists, not for IT people, not for um, technical people. And I was trying to follow this example. I have a book. Of, the title of this book is uh, Statistics for Terrified Biologists. So my presentation here is uh, Transmart Data load and Loading for Terrified Biologists as well. So there is nothing to be terrified of and it's not that difficult. You just have to um, follow certain steps. So uh, we have, um, there is a Transmart Foundation Wiki. On the Transmart Foundation Wiki, there is a page on the curating and loading data. And this is also work in progress. And we are, uh, have, um, so we have um, a working group. Um, everyone is welcome to join if they want to. So what we are trying to do here, we are trying to uh, write some pages with examples and standards for data curation and loading. And uh, there is also um, Transmart Tree Library, where you can look on, on the way that you can structure trees for, for different type of studies. And you can ac actually download examples of these trees and load them on your instance. And as I said, this is work in progress. OK. Uh, then we have uh, um, Clara White, formerly Thomson Reuters, page for TM data loader. For, from, from this page, you can download the latest version of the TM data loader. And actually, in 16.2, I believe it comes pre-installed. Uh, most important, there is a wiki here um, that we we are working on. So the wiki, wiki explains how the TM data loader works. So it has um, instruction on different um, options that you can use to curate your data. And it has information about different high dimensional data. You can also download some examples from here and load them using TM data loader. And as I mentioned also, this is work in progress and we go as fast as we can with it. But we do have our day job and this is our volunteering for the community kind of effort. Uh, there is an issue page where you can post an issue and we will try to answer it the best we can um, in our free time as a volunteering uh, as a volunteering effort for the community. So, and um, just a disclaimer, not all of the issues that you may have with TM data loader has to do with TM data loader because it has been designed based on the cattle. And it, in addition to doing the data extraction, transformation and loading, um, part of it is, happens in stored procedures. So there are stored procedures that are part of uh, Transmart, the TM data loader evoke the stored procedure to load the data after a certain point. Okay. 
back to TM data loader training. Okay, and you can interrupt me at any time. Just raise your hand and uh, Rudy can unmute you. So let me know if you have any questions. And uh, we will send out the slides and it has links. So you can go to the wiki and explore it yourself. Okay, but now is to set up the, uh, your environment. Uh, so I have learned uh, how to set up my environment from Monica, who is actually on, on this training as well. And Monica will be doing another training for data loading later. And she will be talking also about TM data loader. So if you join that training, you can learn additional things that you may not be able to cover in this training. So there is more than one way to set up uh, your data loading environment. Um, and um, here I'm assuming that you have a very nice DBA support and your Transmart has been installed somewhere on server and you had your login and your password and instructions on how to connect to the ETL server. You'll need to connect to the ETL server to move your data there and to run TM Data Loader to load your data into Transmart. So on Windows, you can set up uh, your environment. You, you can use combination of two things. Win SCP, which will provide you with the SFTP connection to your uh, server. And then here, the bottom screenshot here is, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see your computer, and you're just going to see the server. So all you do is you just take your study and drag and drop it into your server into the right folder and then you're ready to go and you can load it. Well, you can load it when you have PuTTY. So PuTTY, it's a terminal emulator. So you install PuTTY and then you open it and you have to connect to your ETL server as well. And in the PuTTY, you give a command to the TM data loader to start loading your data that you already moved into your um, server into the right folder. Okay, no questions so far? Okay. I, um, I, I don't see any questions, sorry. Okay. Okay. So um, there are other uh, ways and other tools that you can use to set up your environment, and I'm going to be using the CyberDuck. Uh, CyberDuck can work on Windows and Mac, and I have a Mac, and uh, WinSCP doesn't work on Mac. So, but I like the CyberDAC as well. And uh, CyberDAC allows you to move your folders into your server. And then I just start the TM data loader from uh, a terminal, from a regular terminal on Mac. But I can install PuTTY as well. PuTTY will work on Mac. Um, and there are also other ways of doing this. So that's about the setup and hopefully you all set up and you're ready to go and then we can just now look into how you prepare your data for loading. So and, um, this part is a bit of a cooking show. So this is the data set uh, that I want to use as, as an example. So here you can, first of all, you will need the series matrix file. So you open it and you just download it into your computer. Okay. The series matrix files, it has 75% of all the information that you will need to create data loading files. So from the serial matrix file, you can create a clinical data file. Uh, you can create an um, expression data file date for loading. And you can create a subject sample mapping file. Then you just need to download a template. Uh, so in order to create a clinical data file, all you need to do is you need to 
you don't really need to copy everything. You just need to copy the top rows of this um, of this file here that has some clinical information. From the IDREF parts, that's where the expression information starts. And you can load this information as is, or if you are very picky, you can download raw cell files that are also available from GEO, and you can do your own renormalization and create a different gene expression file. But this uh, file here it is pretty good most of the time. People just use already normal, normalized data. For clinical data, you, you saw I have copied uh, that file. Um, yeah, I'll copy it again because I need to pivot it. Okay. Need to transpose this. Okay. So once you transpose it, then you can uh, look what kind of data is available. So the first column that you will need to have in your data file, it has to be a study ID. So you just make one column for study ID. A simple title um, is usually a subject ID. So here you have the subject O1, OA1, OA2. Um, I know the study, so it just means that osteoarthritis patient 1, osteoarthritis patient 2, array patient 1, array patient 2. Um, so then next is the geo accession number uh, for this. Um, subject and this is a sample ID and uh, in your data file you don't really need a sample ID but you need a sample ID in your subject sample mapping file. Sample status you don't really need any of that. Channel this is just the information about data processing you can delete that. Then the next is a synovial biopsy. This is actually not a very useful data because it's the same for every single file. Homo sapiens, you can keep that information. Then the next one is a tissue type. That's a useful information. You want to keep it. Then you have disease, age, gender, treatment. And after that, all this information is useless. You can delete it. Okay. Um, and then after a little bit of cleaning, you will have a very nice data file. And then, I, like I said, you will need to have a subject, study, subject, sample for your subject sample mapping file. So the study ID, you can simply use the, um, the ID for, the, for your geo study. So you can use this. You just want to make sure that it, it's not changing as you're dragging it. And you'll need to fill out the whole, um, all of the rows. And then you just copy that. And then you will create your subject sample, um, subject sample mapping file out of this. And from this series matrix file, you also create your gene expression data. So you just go here. Um, delete everything that you don't need in your gene expression data. And here you are. You got your gene expression data file. And the only thing that you would need after that is your uh, map, uh, platform file. So here I want to digress a little bit about platform. So Transmart has been created when initially it was created, uh, the only high dimensional data was the uh, gene expression data. And gene expression data usually has platform. That's where terms come from. Here's a platform. 
and if any of you have analyzed data gene expression data um, there is also this term feature annotation so the platform file is basically feature annotation file that links and um, probes to genes and other annotation so this is a platform and you just download the full table for this platform okay um, so after other high dimensional data have been added um, they also design the same way the loading design the same way you need to have uh, your um, you have data file you have to have subject sample mapping file and you have to have a platform file that necessarily this does not necessarily mean that platform has been used to generate the data it could be proteomics data it could be like a, a um, an assay where um, proteins were detected with antibodies and there is no platform per se then but what what you do you create that platform file and you link your antibodies IDs to uh, uniprot IDs for example and call it a proteomics data so platform is just a term for um, any uh, for a specific feature annotation file that will link your um, tool um, your, your peptide your um, transcript ID your antibodies ID um, any um, detecting or detected entity to a standard um, gene ID to a standard uniprot ID to a standard metabolite ID so that's the purpose of the um, yeah I need to open it the purpose of the platform file okay. I have downloaded this platform file and um, it can be used as is you just add it to your folder with your data and you can use it as is TM data loader will uh, read this format um, but when you create a platform file um, you don't really need that much information here for the gene expression data I'll show you the minimal required information for the platform file now that's the data So this is why this is a cooking show because here I got everything already prepared. I'm pulling it out of my oven. Uh, but I hope you got the idea. You download the data, you just transform them, clean them up into formats um, that you need to load the data. So this is uh, the minimum information that you need for a platform file for expression data. Uh, platform files they have a little different format for different HDD data type and you actually have to stick with that format and um, this is I think a historic fact of life that's how this data has been um, developed uh, but basically it will have an ID for your detecting entity or detected entity and then ID for a standard entity and or a standard symbol so for expression data you don't even need a symbol you don't you can get away with just gene ID because the way the data is being loaded if you have a symbol it will load both uh, and trade gene ID and a symbol ID but then it will go into the dictionary um, for uh, the gene for the genes and it will verify gene ID with a gene symbol if they don't match it will replace it with the one that is in loaded with with transmart data so you may just skip it uh, if you are creating this file from the scratch if you're downloading it you may keep all of the information it will still load it so that's um, about the expression data um, the expression data um, it's the easiest part and I think people don't usually have any issues with expression data 
um, I want to show some of the other data, for example, mass spec proteomics. So, as I said, all these data types were developed over time. Well, most of them, I think, were developed for RC2, for Sanofi, but it was developed using different requirements. So, platforms have a slightly different look to them. Yeah, this is the um, proteomics platform, and here you got platform, uh, peptide. And uh, this data type in the description, it's called HPLC proteomics, and it, it's been developed for HPLC data originally, but it does not really mean that you cannot load any other proteomics data. It's just instead of peptide, you will have like antibody IDs, and you map, will map them to the uh, Uniprot ID. But other than that, um, everything else should be the same. Okay. So this is mass spec proteomics data. And we do have uh, on the trans TM data loader wiki, we do have examples. So you can download examples from there for some of the studies and you can try to load them. Um, this is another example, metabolomics data. Open. And this is metabolomics data platform. And you can see that this platform has a um, super pathway, sub pathway. These are optional fields. If you don't put anything here, it's still going to load data, but these ones are useful to have because you can filter your data on these pathways if you have them. And then in your analytics only, analyze that are mapped to these pathways will be analyzed. As a standard ID, uh, the only thing that is still available for metabolomics is HMDB ID, and I hope this will be further developed because unfortunately HMDB database does not have IDs for all of the metabol metabolites. Um, metabolites are not as well organized as genes or proteins, it's kind of a newer field and they have several different databases with standard IDs for different type of metabolites. But even if you don't have ID, your data will still load. It's just going to be harder to find it for some of the analysis. But it will work just fine in um, in um, heat map or marker um, analysis and, and some of the other analysis. And you can always assign pathway, a super pathway, and use that for your filtering. So that's metabolomics. Okay, and other data, and they have actually similar philosophy, other high dimensional data. There are slight differences in how you format your files for data loading, uh, but the data is similar. So here I already have metabolomic study loaded and I want to compare control and treated subjects for this study. Here's my summary statistics and since I don't really have any data here, no age, no sex, so it just says unknown. Uh, but in advanced workflow I can select marker selection, okay. I can drag and drop my high dimensional uh, data. I don't really need that many markers. Don't I don't really have 50 markers. But as I said here, you can uh, select a pathway. You can select a metabolite or select a pathway. I'm selecting cholesterol biosynthesis. And you can see this, cholesterol biosynthesis MET998. MET998 is the name of the platform that I used. So for analysis of your data set, you can only use the pathway that is def defined in the platform that is associated with this data set. So I'm applying my selection and then I run it. 
Okay. And here you go. Uh, you got your um, metabolites uh, that are associated with cholesterol biosynthesis pathway in the um, data and uh, platform file. And you can see here it says private, 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 private. It just means that I didn't really have a standard ID associated uh, with this particular metabolites because they're just not present in this HMDB database. Okay. And this is a table of top markers. Okay. No questions so far? Uh, okay. just, uh, let's, just, let's wait one second. Let's see. Uh, there aren't any yet, but if anybody wants to raise your hand or type a question, I don't see any. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, keep going. Okay. So now we're going to um, go ahead and load some data. Um, you can see here um, that I have created a foundation training, training folder. So all I need to do is I need to put my data there. And I have, I put a whole bunch of data in there already and I have tried to load them. Okay. So that's my data. That's uh, my server. That's my ETL server. And on the ETL server, I have foundation training data and I have it under the data folder and this is data folder is a default folder where a TM data loader will be looking for data to load. So I can um, put some data there um, like something that I don't still have here. Okay, I can put this um, arthritis data for example that we are just looking into and I put it in here. Okay. Now it's been transferred there. Okay, and now I have my file, uh, my data. And the data has a folder that has a data name and then it has expression data to upload and expression data to upload had all these different files that we need. It has um, the data file, this one gene expression data, it has a subject sample mapping file, and it has a platform file. Okay, and then I have clinical data. I will come back to the clinical data, and clinical data have a clinical data file and a clinical data mapping file. Okay, uh, let's just load this, and then I will go through few examples of the clinical data mapping. So as I mentioned, um, I just use my terminal to load. Here's my terminal. Okay. So in order for me to connect to um, to this server, I have to give it a key. So I have here, this is my command. I'm giving it a key and it should connect me. Yeah, it, it is. It has connected me to um, the server, and now I just need to connect to my screen. So another thing that we usually install on our ETL server is this little utility called Screen. In the Screen utility, you can just create your own environment, and you don't share it with other curators, and then you can have your um, kind of commands already in there. So this is the screen that I have created for myself. Okay. And that's the part that it circles because you do things and it's not working.
Yeah, I might have connected to my screen. But let's just see. Yeah, I can connect to a different screen. Just to make sure I'm connected. Okay. Now all I need to do is I need to start um, the TM ETL data loader. And that's how I started. Allow non unique columns, it's just the same I do um, standardly. And if you ever use TM data loader and you get um, the duplicate columns error, that's the option that you have to add. It actually does some QC of the data, and if it sees that you have duplicate columns names in your data, it, it believes that you have some sort of an issue with your data, so it generates error. So either don't create the same columns in the data file, give them number one to three, um, otherwise you may get an error. So just in case, I know that I don't really have any duplicate columns, but occasionally there is something there. Um, now it's going, so it, it, it's loading, it started to load. It loaded uh, uh, the platform file, and now it's loading data, and it will just go through the um, data, and then it will load clinical data. Okay, and uh, we will let it be. We'll let it continue. Okay. While it's doing this, we can look at some um, clinical data. So for clinical data, all you need is you need to have at least two files. The one file that will have your data, and in that file you will have study, subject, sample IDs. You don't really need it. And then you have some um, data about that subject. That's the same data that you just saw when we downloaded the data from the geosite. And then you have to have your mapping file, come on. And the mapping file will just have TM data loader, where to, how to load data and create a transmart tree. So here I want to have samples and time points folder and load all the data about sample type, sample source, biopsy type, and then I want to load demographics, um, data, medical history, and treatment groups. Okay. So um, the data we're loading as we were talking, I'm not sure if it's completed, but we can take a look. Not yet. So the data is still being loaded. Yeah, it's still loading. It's, it's not a very small study. Most of the studies are quite small. Okay, and sometimes when the data is loaded, uh, the user interface is also slow, but we'll give it a try. So while the data is loading, I want to show one more feature. It's a high dimensional data loading and here I have loaded RNA-seq as a high dimensional data. Summary statistics. So what the high dimensional serial data allows you to do basically allows you to have your uh, time on the right scale. So here I have weeks so and we will build um, the line graph. Of course, you will have to select a gene because it cannot really build and see and Okay, 
I don't remember what genes are here, so I'll just have to open the data. It's my platform. Okay, I'll take this gene here. And we will build a line graph using this gene. Apply selection. And then we hit run. As I said, it might be slow because the data is being loaded. So while it's loading, uh, we will look at this serial high dimensional data. Of course, it's not going to be, it's going to be very different in 17.1, but until we get there, that's the way to have your data on the proper time scale. So if you want to do that, you have to have your platform file, you have to have your data file, you have to have your subject sample ma mapping file, but you also have to have sample dimension file. And the sample dimension basically just takes uh, your data that you have in your category CD for the subject sample mapping file, okay, and then it maps it to units. So the units will be day, days, and this is the value. And for the display label, we still want to have weeks because it looks nicer that way. You go back to this, still collecting data. Okay, uh, any questions? I still see none. All right. Um, okay, I'm either very clear or very unclear, one of the two. Okay. So while we are waiting for the data to finish loading and for the run, for the analysis to go through, we can look at some other examples um, of the data. So here's the low dimensional serial data. So you can also load low dimensional data as serial data. And for that, TM data loader has a little different uh, approach of that, uh, for example, ICE. You can also load this data um, as a serial data using ICE. But the approach is different. So here I got my data. You can see I got different analytes and I have time points and then I have some other clinical data. And I will show you how the mapping file looks for this data. So, and it has to be described on the wiki, on the TM data loader wiki. So, basically, what you see here is you have a time point variable. So the mapping file for all of the clinical data has to have this columns. It has to have file name, category, CD, where you map your data. It has to have column number, data label. Data label source is optional. Only if you use a data label for some other column, you'll have to have uh, the column number there. Okay, and then it can have additional columns here for TM data loader, and this this these columns, they have to be in a specific order. So the first one has to be file name and the second one has to be category CD. For TM data loader, there are a number of different columns that you can use for data type and for data validation. They don't have to be in a specific order, but they have to have the specific name because that's what TM data loader is looking for. So when the TM data loader see this data type, variable type as a time point, and see this as time, then it takes this time 
and converts it into um, into the right scale the same way uh, that um, time mapping file that I have shown you earlier does and it, it actually creates the same kind of XML file so it will take this time point so it will do it will take this time point and actually will convert everything into like minutes and put it on the right scale but it will still display um, these um, labels and it uh, it understands days, hours, um, minutes, seconds, and several different formats that are on the wiki, and it will just convert it from there. And that's another feature um, of the TM data loader. You see the time with two uh, dollar sign um, symbols. It it's a tag, so it's it's kind of similar to data label it's just not the same data label um, is, is more of a special token in in transmart and attack is just attack it's then then when it's read by the tm data loader it is translated into whatever data is in this column and then category cd is interpreted after the translation Okay. Let me see. Yeah, um, I should have started loading such a big study because it's too slow for the demo. Okay. Any questions now? If you uh, want to ask a question, I can just um, unmute you and you can ask it directly if you'd like. Oh, okay. Then I'll talk a little bit more about tag if no one has any questions. Okay. Okay. Um, so, as I have mentioned, tag um, is a TM data loader thing. It allows to use um, multiple labels, and Monica may talk about it earlier because she was the one who started um, with um, with this tag because we had data that were in long, um, very very long columns. And loading them was a really really a big problem with just one um, data label. So that's how the tags were developed, just to facilitate loading of the long column format. And then we have we have continued to um, improve it to just make our life easier as data curators. So right now, what I have here is uh, another way of you can use tag to, for example, concatenate um, values. And here I have see what I have here. I have weight and height, and here I have units. So you can use tag in your mapping file to have this to concatenate it together. So you don't really have to do it in the data file. And here I use another tag um, to load race and sex basically from one column. So it just makes um, life of the curator much easier if you have more tools to use. Okay. So we can go back to the wiki and look at the other features that I described here. So it has uh, all of the um, basics So how you lay out your data, how you make your mapping file and has examples of mapping file. You can just follow the mapping file and it has some special TM data loader features. 
like for example this one so there are the special features uh, there are the special symbols that you uh, have to make sure that you use properly for loading data because they are expected to do a specific role by uh, the stored procedure so plus symbol is one of those special symbols um, that you use in your category CD but at some point we found that we really need to have this plus because we were loading flow cytometry data and they have um, CD28 plus or CD4 plus and it was not really um, a standard way to rip changing plus with a word plus so we have developed a special handling so you can have plus in your data uh, you just have to load uh, to change it to plus in um, like this and then after TM data loader go through all the regular pluses and uh, do whatever it has to do with them to load the data it will convert this plus into plus sign and in your uh, transmart tree it will be displayed that way so here there are tags uh, explanation um, and this is an example of tag but it's also a terminator symbol the terminator symbol is just that you want um, your uh, data to be loaded up to displayed up to a certain point and the terminator symbol is useful when you have uh, when you're using for example visit name so the visit name um, for some dimensional data you have to use it but for your um, demographics data for example you don't really have to load them for each visit so you may just use a terminator symbol at the end of your category CD to prevent it um, adding of the visit at the end of your category CD Okay, and here you got also merge mode modes uh, description. So the merge modes, it's an incremental data loading. So you've loaded your study and then you generated more data and you need to load them. Or you loaded your study and some of your data has changed. You have to replace um, your data. So um, for that, you use the merge mode. And merge modes are also explained here. So you can update the variable or you can append some data. You can replace some data. So, um, and um, it's not really, uh, you don't really do anything special for that. You can just create a different mapping file for additional data or replacement data and you have the merge mode um, comment line on the top of your clinical data mapping file so it's the same kind of clinical data mapping file as a standard but you have a merge mode comment okay, if you don't really have any merge mode comment it, it's a default it will just load that study as a new study and if you happen to have a study like that already in your uh, uh, on your instance it will just take delete it and replace it with that new study without the disclaimer summary statistics it's um, a QC so in your mapping file in addition to uh, the columns that you um, have to have there you can add validation a variable type and I showed you variable type time uh, point and you can also add variable rules so the variable rules um, can have um, different uh, rules for your data you can say the data in this column should be higher than this or lower than that or within this range um, and there are some of the other rules that are described here and when you load your data, after you load your data, uh, the TM data loader will create a summary statistics file like that. Here I was not doing any um, actually data validation, so this summary statistics file does not really have much 
but if you create validation rules, it will have all this information for the data if it's um, relevant for your validation rules. It will have um, whether the validation it passed for the validation rule and fail validation rule, why it failed validation rule, QC range, and this if you say that some of your data data type is numeric, it will also calculate all of the statistics. And this is the same statistics and that it is being calculated in summary statistics in Transmart. So you can um, take your data generate summary statistics in Transmart and you can then look at your summary statistics output to make sure that the data that you've loaded looked look exactly the way that your data that you see in your Transmart. So, um, okay, we are at the top of the hour right now. Okay, and um, yeah, my <coughs> Uh, circus, it's not working very well. So the data is still being loaded, and I'm not sure why it's so slow. So that's a part of, of the presentation that I just won't be able to show today. But I can talk about other high dimensional data or other clinical data options or we can just stop here for now. Let's we'll see if there are any questions. Can anybody uh, have any comments or questions you'd like to, to bring up? Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, it was a very good um, you know, overview. Uh, and I think uh, the recording will be helpful for everyone once we get it out there. So thanks again. Um, for those of you on the line, thanks for uh, sitting through. Uh, we will have uh, more training as we go throughout the year. Uh, this is this recording will be posted uh, within the next couple of hours, I hope. And um, let your colleagues know if uh, others want to watch it or if you want to look at other other trainings as we go through the year. Thanks, everybody, and thanks a lot, Natalia. That was great. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye bye. Bye.